Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. It's Saturday, February the 11th. It's time for our daily devotion. We are continuing in the Gospel of John today, and we are in the middle of chapter 4. We're starting this morning at verse 7. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman? How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well? and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she said. She replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands, and the man you have is now is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. All right, so the famous story of of the woman at the well. And uh, Jesus is making his way up through or down through Samaria. Uh, Samaria was a region of Israel just on the other side of the Jordan River. It's north of Judea. It's north of Jerusalem. And the thought was is that this is where the Israelites originally crossed over the Jordan River. Uh, when they came into Israel for the first time. And uh, they cross over and they come to a pair of mountains, Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. And uh, there, there are some things that are said there in the Old Testament about these mountains. Now, the Samaritans became people who believed that they were to build structures on uh, Mount Gerizim and worship God there alone. Uh, now, it's later that Jerusalem becomes the capital of Israel, and uh, the temple is built on that mountain there, Mount Zion in, Israel, in, in, um, in Jerusalem. But the Samaritans were people who always said, well, wait a minute, this is where we crossed over, and we, have some, we believe we have some words from God here that are saying that we should only worship on this mountain. So the Samaritans did not have any dealings with the Jews because the, Jew, the Samaritans thought the Jews were not faithful. And of course, the Jews thought the Samaritans were not faithful. So uh, they didn't really like each other. So there's a little bit more to that story about the good Samaritan than you might think. Um, They still did not like each other. It was mutual. It wasn't just that the Jews didn't like the Samaritans, um, but it was like the Samaritans did not like the Jews either. And, And now Jesus is going through Samaria and he gets in a conversation with this woman and uh, he talks to her about uh, springs of living water. And of course, he is talking about himself. And then we also believe that there definitely is a good connection here to baptism and the association of salvation that we make with baptism and, um, and, and as being living water and water that's combined with the word of God. So, you know, Jesus is, is reaching out to this person. Interestingly, she does bring up the controversy about which mountain that uh, is God is to be worshipped on. And Jesus dismisses both mountains. Now, isn't that interesting that Jesus says a time is coming when you will neither worship me on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. In other words, it doesn't matter. So, I mean, I think this adds additional support to the notion that 
um, the, the, the temple, which some people talk about the importance of being rebuilt someday, is, is really irrelevant because uh, if Jesus says that we're not going to be worshiping God on either Mount Zion or Mount Gerizim, then, uh, you know, but we worship God in truth and in spirit, that only adds to the argument uh, that, you know, Christianity has now uh, largely or, or completely moved on um, past its Old Testament roots. And not to say that we still don't remember them and, and read them and, um, and are edified by them, of course. But we're not going back to them as some churches believe uh, that a temple must be rebuilt in Jerusalem and, uh, and that that's going to be the central location for end time fulfillment and all of that. Because Jesus you know, really says it all here today in John chapter 4, that we worship God in truth and in spirit and uh, not, on those, uh, not on those mountains in the Middle East. And, of course, God does come to us in truth and spirit in the person of Jesus. And Jesus leaves us his Holy Spirit following the time of Pentecost. And the Pentecost, or, or rather the Spirit, is the one who brings us into a uh, relationship with Jesus Christ, into believing that he is the Son of God who shed his life or shed his blood on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, and that by believing in him we will have eternal life. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, announcements for today. So uh, Sprouts is happening at 1 p.m. today. And then tomorrow, uh, we do have a church council meeting after the uh, Sunday service. Uh, we do not have confirmation, youth confirmation tomorrow night, though. We're giving everyone off for the Super Bowl. So you can all root for the Chiefs. Um, that's going to be our team. And um, hope that they win. And then, But we will resume confirmation the following week. We are having Season Saints this coming Tuesday, February the 14th. So I uh, hope you can join us as, uh, for that Bible study. And then a week from Wednesday, Ash Wednesday is here. And Ash Wednesday services will begin at uh, 7.30 a.m. and then 7 p.m. And so the 7 p.m. service will be the communion service at 7.30 a.m. Uh, will just be the imposition of ashes. And then, of course, there will be imposition of ashes at the evening service as well. Uh, we have just uh, two names down for our midweek Lenten supper sign up sheets um, or slots and so if you would like to put your name down uh, we have someone I believe for uh, Ash Wednesday but then we need someone for the following week so hopefully we can get that filled out this uh, this coming Sunday and you can put your name down and uh, and, and donate a meal to the congregation for our, for our midweek suppers all right uh, that's all of the announcements I have for today thank you for watching our daily devotions uh, I'll be back with you on Monday as we continue our way through the Gospel of John the Lord bless this the rest of your Saturday.